Okay. Yeah, I can see the whole subframe rattle, so I'm betting it's definitely that bearing. Hi everyone. Um, welcome to my channel. I'm Redneck Computer Geek, and today we're going to be working on a center support bearing on a, a 1993 Ford Ranger. This is pretty universal for most of the 90s Rangers, along with the B22 Mazdas. So, hope this helps you out. One thing I'd like to go and note is when you get out your bearing, you're going to notice it's directional. There's a metal plate on one side, and that the rubber actually has a flange on one side. That goes towards the front, and it's so that when stuff gets kicked up and stuff, that this metal piece blocks it from getting inside of the bearing. The other side goes towards the back. So if we were looking down the truck at this moment, it means that you would have it inserted like this when you put it in. So now we're going to get started. First thing we got to do, we got to pull off the universal joint that's on the back side. I'll show you a picture of that. And then once you get those four bolts done, you're going to drop that down onto the ground. Be careful not to end up losing your needle bearings and your caps. Once you get that down onto the ground, then you're going to proceed to take out the two bolts that hold on this bearing. And then from there, you're going to pull the entire assembly out of the back of the transmission. At this point, you do want to have an oil pan because if your transmission is topped off where it's supposed to be, it's most likely going to lift once you pull it out. Okay, so let's get started. Important first step. Hi, so as stated before, the first step is going to be to remove these on either side. So if you rotate it so that these two are down, you can undo those. And then you can lift the rear tires off just a little bit with your front wheels chucked. Rotate the rear wheels while the machine is in neutral to bring the other side down. And then undo that. Make sure to mark which side goes to which side on the spindle so that you maintain being level when you put it all back together. All right, so at this point, you can see we have the universal joint off. So if we come up here to where the bearing is, you'll see that the yoke is on the end. And now we need to remove the bolts. There's one on this side and one on this side. All right, so once you get your two bolts loose on each side, this will be able to move up and down nice and simple and easy. So from here, you need to come forward and you need to pull the yoke out of your transmission. It just should pull forward. On a side note, if you use something like a cat litter container and cut the side out of it, you can lay it in underneath, catch everything, and then if it's decent fluid, open up the lid and pour it back in later. Alright, so on this one, we ended up not having any fluid coming out, probably because this is a standard transmission. But if you don't have any fluid, that's probably a good indication you better check. Mine does leak, so now I'm going to later. So from here, we're going to move to inside the garage, working on the bench, to get the yoke off. Alright, so just to demonstrate, this is our unit. As you can see, if I pull on this, there's no movement whatsoever. This is the one we're removing today. Only a little bad. Alright, so the next step is there's a 24 millimeter nut that's on the inside here. You're going to have to take that off, and then you're going to have to pull the yoke, and then the bearing. don't have an electric impact by now you really should probably have one uh, they're only about 60 bucks you can pick them up just about any hardware store and they make your life so much easier all right so from here the yoke should just pull off but as you can see it's long since rust welded so we're gonna get out a clamp I mean a we're gonna get out a puller and we're gonna yank it right off there 
All right, so if yours is rusted on like this one is, you're gonna need a puller like this, and you just clamp it onto the edge, run it down through the center, and you'll actually notice it's divoted in the middle for a puller anyway. So they must have at least realized that it was going to get screwed up. Once you get that on there, whoop, ours actually just busted free. So normally you would have chucked it up, put an impact socket on it, and gone at it with an impact wrench. But ours actually broke free as we were pulling it. So we'll pull that off. Make sure to save the washer. And then pull your bearing off, which hopefully will come as one unit. Otherwise you're going to have to use a puller on that. All right, so this bearing is stuck, and unfortunately my standard puller won't fit over the top of it. So we're going to take a screwdriver and a rubber mallet. We're going to set it in on the edge, try not to scar the surface where the bearing lays, and just knock the old bearing a couple of times and see if it'll come loose. There we go. So the old one is off. Now we're going to get the new one put on and make sure we get it going the right direction. All right, so at this point, we've got our old bearing off and we need to put our new bearing on. And I'll make sure in the description to put exactly what model number this is. So you got your plate. Your plate goes on first. That should go all the way up to the shaft piece. Your bearing goes with this flange going towards the front. So that goes on next, and you should be able to rock it back and forth and tap it slightly on. Then from there, you've got your yoke. Then you've got your washer. And then you've got your nut. Okay. All right. One thing you may have to do is you may have to take a rubber mallet and you may have to go back and forth on this in order to get it in far enough that you can finally get your nut on. But once you've got it in there far enough, you can put your nut on, go back to your 24 millimeter socket and your impact, and mount that sucker on there. Now, I read up on the torque specs on this. The torque spec is about 110 to 120 pounds. This is 150, but I really don't think it is. It's about 100 to 120. So we're just gonna call it good there. All right, so you're at the point now that you can just go back and reinstall it. Um, basically, just do everything I told you in reverse in that you put it up and over the cradle first, you put your side into the transmission, you set this in, put your two clips on, and then put your bolts through, and then mount your joint, and then put your clips on and your bolts. And remember what I said about being able to lift the rear end in order to rotate the drive shaft when you need to. Have fun, be safe, hope you get yours done.